Good morning. My name is Jade Quarrell and I'm a Capacity Development Manager at IDI. This is a presentation that I gave this morning on professional education for SI auditors, which is a new pilot that we will be running. Please do get in touch with me if you have any questions after the presentation. Thank you. So today I'm going to present on professional education for SI auditors, which is a new pilot that's been run by IDI. I want to talk a little bit about what we're trying to do and why we're trying to do it. The Professional Education for SI Auditors pilot is a part of the 3I programme. And the 3I programme is about SI implementation initiatives. And the programme, the Professional Education for SI Auditors pilot, will be there to try and develop the capacity of staff to implement the SI. When we think about the SI implementation, we often think about the need for professional staff capacity. And this means the need to have staff who have a sound understanding of the, of the SIs and also have the competence to apply the standards effectively. In order to try and define these competencies, InterSci have developed a competency framework. And in that competency framework, they lay out functional competencies related to audit areas, but also the cross-cutting competencies that auditors need to help them to act professionally. And the SI ed professional education pilot is focused on the idea that we will be trying to develop all of those competencies. Now thinking about these ISI complement competencies, we held a poll in the room about how the ISI's competencies were developed in a particular SI. And within the room, we found that 53% of the size developed the competencies in-house. So through training programs and um, individual trainings that were offered in-house. And this can be a combination of education programs and on-the-job training. 10% of the size in the room had partnered with accountancy organisations, 20% with universities and 17% had other arrangements in place to train in these SI competencies. Now the professional education for SI auditors pilot is really thinking about developing another option for this list. So we're not trying to take anything away that's there already, but add another choice in for size to use. So the purpose of the Professional Education for SI Auditors pilot is partly to obtain experience in using the competency framework for education. And in doing this, we'll develop a syllabus and materials that are based on the competency framework. This will have the purpose of giving us the opportunity to feed back and strengthen that InterSci competency framework, but also create things such as syllabuses that can be used by size in the future. We also will, as one of our purposes, develop and pilot three IDI professional education programmes for SI audit, as I mentioned before, looking at the functional streams of financial performance and compliance audit with a common cross-cutting element. Now, I know that in some size, these streams are combined when audits are being performed, and there will be the opportunity that maybe an auditor will want to gain the financial and the performance competencies or even the competencies for all three streams. And that will be possible under this programme, but in terms of delivering those global competencies, they will be kept as separate streams. The final purpose is to assess the feasibility of scaling the pilot up to a regular professional education uh, offering. Now, the pilot is going to be fairly substantial, so we hope to educate on a global basis. A fairly large number of people join the pilot phase, and this decision will be about making it into a regular delivery for more auditors and for more size. 
Now, some of you may have heard before this um, talk of a IDI certification or an IDI audit certification. And you'll notice that now I'm talking about an education pilot. This change in name has partly been to try and convey better what it is we intend to do. But it also represents the idea that we want to focus on supporting the development of competencies through education. So we need to work from where the SIs are at the moment, the current level of needs of SI auditors, and develop those needs, develop those competencies towards this SI com towards SI compliance. The real focus on having an education pilot is that you leave no one behind. So you can deliver education to bring people up from all the different sides. And the change also represents a need to address stakeholder concerns. There was kind of a feeling with the certification that we were trying to create like a chartered body and that we were going to start uh, requiring all auditors to be certified by us, which was really never our intention. This has always been about focusing on delivering education and then assessing on that education at the end. So when we think about this pilot, we are thinking about trying to deliver it to these four principles. So we're looking for something that's scalable, relevant, inclusive and credible. When we think about scalable, we mean that it should be able to be scaled up. So although we hope to make a fairly chunky delivery in our pilot, we are hoping that as we take this forwards, we'll be able to deliver to more auditors. It also needs to be relevant and it needs to be relevant to the needs of the SI. And we will make it relevant by basing it on this competency framework that focuses on the competencies that are needed by auditors to achieve ISI compliance. It should also be inclusive. And when we think about inclusivity, we want to think about size of different sizes, size in different areas, and also issues such as gender that exist within size. <laughs> the program needs to be credible and in order to be credible we need to make sure it's delivered to a high quality and on a consistent and relevant basis. To achieve this credibility we will be building in a variety of quality control and quality assurance measures as we go through the program. If we think about what we need to consider to implement our principles, we can think about things such as stakeholder expectations. So what do our stakeholders need us to deliver? We can also think about issues such as language. So the pilot will initially be delivered in English, but it will be open to all size. And when we scale it up, providing the pilot is successful, we will make it available in all the IDI languages. But as we develop it, we'll be working on issues related to translatability in order to allow other sides to use the materials to translate into their own languages if they feel it's appropriate. We also need to consider issues around technological development. So how we can ensure that this is delivered to size with different levels of technology and um, also how we can leverage technology to deliver to our principles. But there are many other issues that will come up here as well. These are the ones that were brought up in the room at the meeting today. So in order to try and achieve these principles, we have a number of strategic considerations. The focus of the pilot will be on education, but we will evaluate the learning at the end of the education. So there will be an assessment and only those participants who are successful in the assessment will receive a certification at the end. And that assessment will be based on the competencies that have been developed by InterSci. 
Therefore, the education will also be based on those competencies. And the competencies conclude both theoretical and practical elements. So an auditor needs to know how to carry out their job on the ground, but they also need to know why they are doing some of the things that they do. And it's only by really having that theoretical basis and understanding why we do things that we can apply our concepts such as professional scepticism and professional judgment. The competencies that have been developed are global complements competencies that are for implementing ISAIs across different size. And we acknowledge that each SI varies um, often considerably within their own working environment, but these competencies have been developed to be recognisable across all audit streams. But we appreciate that the SIs will need to add their own local specificities and work experience. So we see this as something that would be a part of the professionalisation of a SI. In terms of the strategy for implementation, we are working to explore strategic partnerships. So we want to work on an ongoing basis with organisations. It will be delivered on the basis of partial cost recovery. So size will be asked to um, pay the direct cost for their participants, but IDI will bear the development costs. So we may be looking at costs such as attending training, uh, costs such as entering an exam to be borne by the SI, but the cost of developing the materials, of de developing the evaluations will be borne by IDI. And we will look to make subsidies available for size that are not able to pay back to that principle of inclusivity and leaving no one behind. The education will be for SI auditors for three audit streams with cross-cutting elements. And as I mentioned already, it will be offered to all SIs and piloted in English. In order to allow for scalability, we'll be looking at blended delivery. So that will be a combination of classroom delivery, face-to-face -face teaching, and also online delivery. This blend, we hope, will help us to achieve the quality that is needed to make this an effective learning and also the scalability that we are looking for to be able to roll this out to as many auditors as would like to sit it as require it. We will have the evaluation of learning. Um, partly to show the quality of the education that has been delivered, but also because many studies show that if we evaluate learning, if there's a test at the end, even if it's a simple quiz, that people learn more, they pay a little bit more attention, they look back over their materials. So it helps to make that learning more effective. As we move forward, as I've mentioned, to try and make sure it's credible, we'll be providing for a governance um, issues, quality management, change and risk management processes. The timeline that we're looking at for delivering this is in this year, 2018, we have developed the framework for the professional education for SI auditors pilot. We are currently carrying out a needs assessment, so we are trying to talk to as many sides as possible about how they deliver professional training and about what areas they feel particularly need strengthening. And in August, we will have a syllabus and evaluation framework development meeting where we'll develop the syllabus and the evaluation framework. And this will set the direction for the whole pilot. So it will really guide everything that we do after that. It'll show what we're going to teach or train in, how we're going to do it, when we're going to do it and how we're going to evaluate it at the end. Once we have that fairly detailed syllabus that we know will build on the competency framework, we can start to design and develop courseware and evaluation materials, which we can then use to deliver the pilot itself. And the pilot will be delivered from 2020 to 2021 through blended learning with evaluation at the end. Once we've been through the pilot, we're going to take a lessons learned and try and see how we can improve the education for the future. And we'll do that through a peer review process, but we'll also be working to move on to a second delivery of the pilot. 
once we have gone through this process of delivering the education and also taking our lessons learned, we'll be able to make a decision on scaling up the pilot for regular delivery and hopefully moving forwards for regular delivery. So as we move forward, we'll be thinking about the risk issues of maintaining the materials and making sure we have good change control processes in place, uh, the development of our costing and fee collection mechanisms. We'll also need to consider initial and continuing professional development. So how do we link this in to the work within the size to actually making sure that it happens in place? And also how we're going to make sure that our evaluation remains credible. So how we're going to proctor and keep our evaluation system credible. Thank you.